Let's go on the alcohol with acidic conditions. Acidic conditions with alcohol. Good conditions for a dehydration. We're going to lose water from the chemical formula. So we lose our alcohol group and a hydrogen from a neighboring carbon. Okay. If there was a more substituted position, then that would give us a EPSEF rule. There's no difference in this case. The final product is cyclopentene. Next one with the potassium dichromate, which is an oxidizing agent. It's one of the main two that we've used in the notes. We talked about potassium dichromate as an oxidizer and potassium permanganate. That as an oxidizer as well. KMnO4. We're going to oxidize this alcohol group by removing hydrogens from either end of the carbon oxygen link, and we'll produce a ketone. Secondary alcohols oxidize the ketones. Primary alcohols will oxidize initially to an aldehyde but then go all the way through normally to the carboxylic acid. Second dehydration of an alcohol. But this time we do have a possible variety of products. The double bond formed on this end of the molecule. That would be a very distinctive and unique product compared to if the double bond formed between carbons two and three. And we've got to take the alcohol group and then a hydrogen from one of the adjacent carbons. And that gives us two unique products. Pent 1e or pent 2e. And the pent 2e is going to be the major product because it's the one that obeys Zyxen's rule. The more substituted alkene product is the one that prevails at least in greater quantity. We will get both, but we usually want to emphasize what the major product will be. It's all about the energy involved and the energy of activation, the energy of that intermediate. It should be enough to worry about. More energy for the eventual, more substituted alkene. There's one, two alkyl branches. This one with hydrogens on this end only has one alkyl branch coming off the carbon to carbon double bond. Next one is alcohol again. Oxidization, that's the KMnO4, potassium permanganate. It's a second oxidizing agent. Again, because it's a secondary alcohol, it's going to produce a ketone. Last one on the page. Oxidation of a thiol. Oxidation of a thiol is normally between two adjacent molecules. We get that sulfur to sulfur.
oxidation builds the sulfur links up, reduction breaks them back down. So which organic can have the higher boiling point? The alcohol or the fire? Good question, Dr. Allen. Any thoughts on what it might be? What normally decides and dictates the boiling temperatures? How much energy it takes to separate molecules into the gas phase? How tightly are the molecules holding on to each other? How strong is the intermolecular bonding forces? What kind of intermolecular bonding forces do we get for alcohols or fire? There only three kinds. The weakest kind we said was induced dipole to induced dipole interactions. We had dipole to dipole interactions. And we had the strongest kind of dipole to dipole interaction, hydrogen bonding. So our alcohols are capable of hydrogen bonding from one molecule to its neighbour. And our pool is biol, which is structurally very similar, it's a cyclopentene ring, is only capable of induced dipole, dipole interactions. The forces of attraction are much weaker between molecules of the thiol, so that's going to allow a relatively lower boiling point compared to the higher boiling point for the alcohol because of stronger intermolecular forces of attraction, hydrogen bonding from one molecule to its neighbor. Draw in that oxygen, the hydrogen bond, and another molecule nearby. is a polar covalent chemical bonds and the electron deficient hydrogen delta positive feels an attraction to its neighbouring electron enriched delta negative oxygen atom because of the small size of the hydrogen the molecules can get closer together closer proximity stronger attraction and the larger the dipole, the stronger the attraction. Bigger dipoles, stronger dipole to dipole attraction. Because there's hydrogen involved in the dipole, we call these hydrogen bonding examples. But the alcohol is a higher bonding point. Second pair, higher boiling point. Now it's an ether compared to an alcohol. We know that the alcohol is capable of hydrogen bonding, which is our strongest kind of bonding force between molecules. But the ether doesn't have a polar covalent oxygen to hydrogen bond. It has polar covalent bonds, certainly, but well, that's only giving us dipole to dipole interactions. Weaker force of attraction, lower boiling point. So again, the alcohol wins. That's what it is generally, unless it's a different in the molecule structurally, because the more branched the molecule becomes, the more branching, the more irregular shape, that will diminish boiling temperatures. So if it's the same kind of functional group, you're probably looking structurally for molecules which are more regular and are packing to give a higher boiling temperature, a molecule that's more linear. In this case, we're really just comparing the functional groups. The alcohol wins again. 
minus 1, this time comparing a phi over to an ether. Very similar in structure. Linear chains. What we only have on the phi alls, we have an induced dipole to induce dipole interactions. And our EVA, because of those polar covalent bonds, give us dipole to dipole interactions. Much stronger form of intermolecular bonding attraction. So stronger dipole to dipole interactions. Molecules hold on to each other much more tightly in the EVA. We have normally, if structurally are similar, we have higher bonding temperatures for the ether. Okay. 